Hello, everyone. My name is Holly Long, and I'm a PhD student at Michigan State University and also a student member of DADD. I am going to be discussing explicit instruction in mathematics. In mathematics research, we see explicit instruction as a consistently effective practice for teaching math skills to students with disabilities. It is considered an evidence-based practice as well as a high leverage practice for students with developmental disabilities as well as learning disabilities. It has been used in research to teach a variety of math skills, including fractions, algebra, operations, numeracy skills, number comparison, word problem solving, and more. It also can be used as part of an intervention package with manipulatives such as concrete or virtual manipulatives, manipulative based instructional sequences such as the VRA or the CRA, the system of least prompts, and video modeling. So what is explicit instruction? Well, explicit instruction is a systematic approach to teaching a range of skills, but today I will just be talking about mathematics skills. So there's four main parts of explicit instruction, and this includes an advanced organizer, modeling, guided, and independent practice. The advanced organizer is an opportunity to connect the current skill to past skills, as well as connect learning to a purpose for students. So this means connecting students to students' everyday life, as well as connecting to further mathematics skills that they'll use this skill to perform. So for example, if I were teaching, if I were teaching equivalent fractions using explicit instruction, I could say something like, today we're working on equivalent fractions. We use fractions throughout our lives when we're baking or cooking or building things. So sometimes I may need to use equivalent fractions in my life. For example, if I'm baking and I need one half cup sugar, but I can only find a one quarter cup measure, measuring cup, then I would need to use equivalent fractions to make sure I have enough sugar. Also, when we learn to add and subtract fractions in the future, we will also need equivalent fractions. So this is a really important skill. So once we've established the advanced organizer, then we can begin modeling. In mathematics specifically, it's really important that we're not only showing the student visually how to solve the problem. So that means modeling how to solve the problem by writing it down so the student can see, but also it's important to show a verbal narration or a think aloud while we, you know, while we're modeling to explain the steps to them. And this helps to build conceptual understanding of the strategy they're te you're teaching and provides additional information to the student. So once you've modeled, then students engage in guided practice. So this is sometimes referred to as we do. However, I wanna kind of push back on that and encourage this idea of guided practice where students complete the problems independently, but you're there to provide prompts, cues, and feedback as needed if the student makes a mistake or forgets the next step. And finally, the student engages in independent practice, which can be used as a way to track student progress or as formative assessment. This is also a great time to provide additional feedback to students once they're finished completing the independent practice problems to clear up any misconceptions you saw while they were solving. Explicit instruction is all about the feedback that you're providing to students as well as frequent opportunities to respond. This process is repeated until the student reaches a set mastery criteria. So you'll repeat the modeling, guided and independent practice until students meet mastery criteria. And this can be done across days or weeks as well. So here I have an example outline of how you could implement explicit instruction. This is pulled from the DADD Mathematics Education and Students with Autism, Intellectual Disability and Other Dis Developmental Disabilities textbook. And this is pulled from chapter four. So I already kind of read through the advanced organizer on equivalent fractions. Um, so you can see here, this is a model of a think aloud that we could use during model during modeling. 
And then moving to guided, now that we've showed you how to solve some problems, we're gonna have the students solve some problems on their own. And I wanna draw your attention here. So this is an example, if the student can't find the relationship appropriately, the instructor might say, what's the fact family? Or do you think you could use a calculator to find the factor? And then also another important thing to note is if the student is struggling or needing a lot of prompts and cues, then you can go back to the modeling stage before proceeding to independence. Some students just need that extra exposure to additional modeling problems to find success in the guided and independent practice. And finally, we end with our independent practice, and that's again, a great time to provide some additional feedback based on what you saw in independent. So here is a option as far as how you can kind of set up your problem. So here we see two modeled problems, two guided problems, and then five independent practice problems. And typically in math research, we see this, this kind of convention. So two to three modeled problems, two to three guided problems, and then five to 10 independent practice problems. But this is flexible. And recently we've been engaging in some research with my advisor, Dr. Emily Bauck, um, with students in an online environment where we're taking things, um, you know, things are taking a little bit more time online. So we've kind of cut that down. So we're only modeling one problem, guiding one problem, and students are only engaging in three to five problems independently as opposed to five to 10. So this can be adjusted based on your students' needs as students sometimes need more exposure to modeling before we see acquisition or we're working with time constraints. So thank you so much for listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.